Hello everybody, we are going to replace a radiator and a thermostat for a 2006 CLK 350. Here's the car, two doors, convertible. It's going to be a step by step how to replace radiator and thermostat, okay? Six cylinder, so first you remove this cover right here, and then remove this plastic tooth that connects to the air filter. Then you got two clips here. There are also two bolts, but I don't think you really need to remove the bolts, just the clips. I'm going to use this tool right here. This one is almost out. And there we go. On plastic. It's not come out yet, but we're gonna try to remove we are going to remove this hose so you gotta push this clip up I already loosened it up before kind of just speed up the video but I use this pick right here pull this up of course you gotta drain the the coolant first in this case coolant is almost gone because it was leaking that's why we are replacing the radiator and then you slowly wobble the hose I already put a pan to catch the coolant and then we wait for it to drain also what I like to do a lot is I always like to I like to check the part so I get a better picture of what I'm going to remove right like for example in this new part I can see the hoses I can see there is a drain so if you guys have to drain the coolant before replacing right or you can drain it you gotta leave the car it has two Transmission lights, all of the lines and the houses are clipped and here's the thermostat with a new gasket, okay? So we move the hose, upper hose out of the way. Very careful to don't break anything. And then here the radiator doesn't have any bolts just by clips so you gotta press on the clips i was be able to do it by hand just push it in and pull up same here clip just push it in and this lift up Put the house out of the way better there you go there you go push in the clip and lift up now i can remove the fan so what i'm gonna try to do first is going to remove the transmission so i can leave the transmission uh, line so i can leave the the fan and then it's gonna give me a better view of the radiator okay so the clips in the car so you can take a look at it is these clips so you just press in like this and then you lift the fan up so now next step remove the lines so the move for lines is pretty much same as removing the coolant hose you lift the clip up with the help of a pick you pull this back and then you just pull on the hose it's going to leak some transmission fluid so 
make sure you put a rock so it doesn't make, make a mess won't leak much though in this case it didn't really leak much you can always put a pan to the bottom and that's gonna give us some more space for lifting up the the radiator fan okay we're gonna lift it up So before lifting the radiator fan, in this side there is a connector holding the, it's connected to the fan. It's up there, I don't know if you guys can see it, right there. So you just gotta press on it, disconnect it, there you go, and then just lift very carefully the radiator fan. Now it's out. So far so good. Take us maybe around 10 minutes so far to remove the fan. And now we have plenty of space to work on this. Transmission lines, they were no really bad. It will be a good idea to replace the seals on transmissions lines, the O-rings and the seals on the or the o-rings on the hoses even better if you replace the hoses they are pretty old in this case the hoses are not too bad they're still good okay and we're gonna move to the next step same here we're gonna disconnect the transmission line in the bottom so we remove the clip same procedure as the one on top you remove it and then the line is stuck to the plastic right here so you gotta pull it out and that way it's gonna be easier to press and remove the transmission hose i'm gonna leave it pointing up so it won't leak a lot of fluid it's just leaking a little bit not really much and next step we are going to disconnect the lower radiator hose I had to remove the lower hose. If you're going to drain the coolant, it's a good idea to remove the plastic right here and then drain it. These clips you press on this plastic and then you lift it up. There you go. Gotta be kind of be careful with this because there's plastic easy to break right here too so you basically press on this clip and lift it up well, it won't be a bad idea to replace the belt too if you need it if you need it this belt is still good so we won't we don't want to touch it but no bad idea to do it now the radiator is loose and the condenser they are together but also again is hold by clips looks like it as you see right here is hold by this clip so we gotta press this clip and push the radiator and then it should be able to lift the radiator and take it out okay so we're gonna do that you see here somebody tried to fix that leak with this but still leaking it's hard to fix the radiator right so I'm gonna remove it with these clips and we continue. Remove with the plastic, then lift the radiator and it goes up. You kind of gotta play with it a little bit. We disconnect the plastic clips that were holding the radiator with the condenser together. We just press it behind and it went up. You kind of have to play with the radiator back and forth to, to try to take it out and then carefully take it out of the way I 
you see this one had the the drain plate right here the air was leaking already it has like two small leaks around so that wasn't too hard to remove the radiator in this car now we're gonna do reversal but before that we are going to install the thermostat next we are going to do the thermostat we didn't really have to remove the pins right here so i put them back it won't affect or we won't be on my way for the radiator the sixth step is the thermostat which is right here it's connected also with the upper hose so you gotta remove this clip and then you gotta remove the bell or loose it up and we are going to use for the bell a 14 millimeter I'm sorry it's uh, cut it ready already it's uh, 17 millimeter okay I already took a picture of the bell so I know how to put it well after I replace the radiator you press down counterclockwise and remove the bell by the side sorry it's kind of hard to work with one hand only and then record with the other one so I just move it and then you don't have to really remove all the bell you can kind of just move it out of the way enough to replace the thermostat there you go here on top so now it's removed now there is more space to the two bolts that are holding the thermostat one bolt behind the air pump and another one behind this pulley so most likely i will have to remove the the air pump too okay so it's easier for me but we're gonna try first see what what happens definitely i'm going to remove this one to have more space and we have to disconnect this one it's just two balls nothing hard just kind of clean up before taking it out they most likely remove the pump and and the uh, pulley open the pulley using a e10 okay the tool is e10 that's how it looks pretty easy to remove after that i disconnect this one so you gotta pull on this gray tag down and then you press it in and then you unplug it okay now as you see it now I have a space to remove the first ball, so only hold by two balls. And the other one, I'm pretty sure I can get it out without removing the pan. That would be nice. So I will try that. Okay. I'm gonna guess it's also a E10. Let's see. Yes, it's a E10 too. This socket is pretty big, it's a 3A, but not sure it's going to fix on the top part. But if one fit, I'm sure you can find the same one, but in a quarter inch. So it's going to be a smaller tool and most likely you won't have to remove this. But let's see, I will try. Remove the ball, but I couldn't use the the bigger 3H. I did use a 3A though, but this is from from like AutoZone and this is a good quality Matco which is a smaller that's why I got it to fit she was nice I don't have to remove the whole pan but if you can get one E10 in a quarter definitely it's gonna fit or you can also go through here with a branch with a E10 branch and 
should be fine too so you don't have to remove the whole thing it's gonna be way easier and save time having the proper tools makes a big difference you pull pull this out very easy make sure you clean it around because the gaskets they get there and you might not sit properly if you don't clean it clean it here put some power cleaner brake cleaner which is pretty good to clean it up and then we are going to install the new one which I really like the gasket because if you see it has these clips right here and these clips they go in the holes so it will hold the gasket in place and you don't have to be fighting with the gasket once you put it in I recommend you to lubricate this gasket before you install it some lubricant and you can always torque these bolts would be a good idea and just do the reverse are okay I don't really have to show how I put it back you know most important like this is to remove it you just follow the reverse steps so we're gonna put it I already installed the new thermostat to install the hose you gotta follow these guides right here that I'm pointing just guide it and press it in okay you don't need to remove this clip it's just once it's there you just press in the hose kind of pull it a little bit hard so you make sure it's all the way in and that's it thermostat was pretty easy it's the first time for me doing this thermostat and the radiator so maybe it would have saved some time if I had the right tool for for the E10 bolts but still wasn't too too much time that I spent with this and now we're gonna install a new radiator I don't think I have to really show how to install it back you just follow the reversal once we remove it but we're gonna keep recording once it's almost done okay and we gotta bleed the coolant to make sure there is no air in the system if the other car is, will overheat okay I always like to install everything bleed it make sure the fan comes on and off by itself a few times making sure that it doesn't have air and then later it will overheat as it can happen make sure the clip right here is holding the cable or the wire for the sending unit on the thermostat okay and another thing there is this rubber basis that holds the radiator so make sure that you have both installed in place before installing the radiator the new radiator remember the clicks here but also has clicks here like a base where it sees the condenser so make sure that you align it properly okay I just put everything back car is not leaking anymore so what I did to play the system is I slowly put pull into the reservoir until it was full some bubbles were going out and then I start the car without the cup and let it run for a little bit and I did that a few times you know making sure there is no more air in the system and then I drove it and the next day in the morning I open the cup again and fill it up so it's no leaks anymore because it has an alternator whining noise so I might do the alternator in the next video also if you go here in the cluster you can see the miles but if you move the arrow you can see the temperatures it's in centigrades it's around 95 right now which is like a 200 203 Fahrenheit that's how the car is supposed to run when everything is good make sure the fans come on come on and off the electric fan and make sure there is no leaks after driving it for at least 15 20 miles there is no leak on the coolant there is no leak on the transmission lines that connects to the transmission lines to the uh, radiator okay so that's pretty much it hope you guys 
like the video I'm gonna try to do more videos my next video might be the alternator for this car have fun